Robert Greene was an English author popular in his day, and now best known for a posthumous pamphlet attributed to him, Greene's Groats Worth of Wit, bought with a million of repentance, widely believed to contain an attack on William Shakespeare. Robert Greene was a popular Elizabethan dramatist and pamphleteer known for his negative critiques of his colleagues. He is said to have been born in Norwich. He attended Cambridge, receiving a BA in 1580, and an MA in 1583 before moving to London, where he arguably became the first professional author in England. Green was prolific and published in many genres including romances, plays and autobiography. <laughs> Family According to Richardson, the chief problem in compiling a biography of Robert Greene is the name. Robert must have been almost the most popular Elizabethan Christian name and Greene is no unusual surname." Newcomb states that Robert Greene was probably the Robert Greene, son of Robert Greene, baptized on the 11th of July 1558 at St. George's, Tombland, Norwich. Green later described himself as from Norwich on his title pages, and the year is appropriate for the Robert Green who matriculated at St. John's College, Cambridge, as a scissor on 26 November 1575. The author's father was probably one of two Robert Greens found later in parish records, either a saddler who lived modestly in the parish until 1599, or a cordwainer who kept an inn in Norwich from the late 1570s until his death in 1591. The Saddler appeals to biographers who attribute the writer's later low life sympathies to a humble birth. The innkeeper, a more prosperous man possibly related to landowners, interests scholars who note the social ambitions of Green's early works. However, in his will proved in 1591, the innkeeper did not mention a son Robert, although he may have disinherited that son, as the writer implied in one autobiographical statement. Both the Norwich cordwainer turned innkeeper and the Norwich saddler left wills, proved in 1591 and 1596 respectively, but neither will mentions a son named Robert. Career <laughs> 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 Green is thought to have attended the Norwich Grammar School, although this cannot be confirmed as enrollment documents for the relevant years are lost. Corpus Christi College, Cambridge, provided scholarships for students from the Norwich Grammar School, and for this reason Green's matriculation as a scissor at St. John's College, Cambridge, has been considered strange. A reason offered for Green's enrollment at St. John's is that some of the gentry of South Yorkshire attended St. John's, and among the dedicates of, or authors of commendatory verses for Green's books were members of the Darcy, Portington, Lee, Stapleton, and Rogers families, all centred at Snaith, Yorkshire. According to Richardson, the Robert Green from Norwich who was an innkeeper may have been an immigrant from Yorkshire connected to a large family of Greens who lived in the parish of Snaith, and may actually have left Norwich to reside at Snaith from 1560. 1571 to 1577. There is no record of Green's having taken part in the dramatic productions at Cambridge in 1579 and 1580, although 18 of his classmates and fellows of the Cambridge Colleges acted in Hymenaeus, and 46 in Richardus Tertius. His academic performance as an undergraduate at Cambridge was mediocre. On the 22nd of January 1580, he took his BA, graduating 38th out of 41 students in his college, and 115th out of the total university graduating class that year of 205 students. He apparently transferred to Clare College for his 1,583 mega amperes where he placed 5th out of 12 students in his college, and 29th of the 129 students at the university. It was rare for a student to migrate to another college as Green did after he had received the baccalaureate. And no record of Green's transfer to Clare College has been discovered, nor does his name appear in the Clare Hall Buttery Book for 1580-84. Green's claim to association with Clare College is found in the second part of Mamelia, which was not published until 1593, after Green's death, in which the dedicatory epistle to Robert Lee and Roger Portington is signed, Robert Green, from my study in Clare Hall the V. of Julie. According to Newcomb, other events of Green's youth must be derived from autobiographical remarks that may not be reliable. 
In The Repentance of Robert Greene, written in the first person, Greene claimed to have traveled to Italy and Spain, however, no evidence of Greene's continental trip has been found. Or, unless we take merely his word for it, that he ever made the trip at all. Further doubt is cast on Green's continental journey by Norbert Bowles, who after undertaking a computer analysis of the vocabulary of the repentance, concluded that the repentance of Robert Green was in fact not written by Robert Green. In the repentance, Green claimed to have married a gentleman's daughter, whom he abandoned after having had a child by her and spent her dowry, after which she went to Lincolnshire, and he to London. In Four Letters 1592, Gabriel Harvey prints a letter allegedly written by Green to his wife in which he addresses her as Dahl. However, e extensive searches of London and Norwich records by successive biographers have failed finally to locate the record of Green's marriage. After his move to London Green published over 25 works in prose in a variety of genres, becoming England's first celebrity author. In 1588, he was granted an M.A. from Oxford University, almost certainly a courtesy degree. Thereafter the title pages of some of his published works bore the phrase Utruisk, Academie in Artibus Magister, Master of Arts in both universities. Green died 3 September 1592, aged 34 if he was the Robert Green baptized in 1558. His death and burial were announced by Gabriel Harvey in a letter to Christopher Bird of Saffron Walden dated 5 September, first published as a butterfly pamphlet about 8 September, and later expanded as four letters and certain sonnets, entered in the Stationer's Register on 4 December 1592. Harvey attributed Green's demise to a surfeit of pickle herring and Rhenish wine, and claimed he had been buried in the new churchyard near Bedlam. On 4 September. No record of Green's burial has been found. According to the repentance of Robert Green, Green is alleged to have written Grotesworth during the month prior to his death, including in it a letter to his wife asking her to forgive him and stating that he was sending their son to her. No record of Green's son by his wife has been found, however, in four letters, Gabriel Harvey claimed that Green kept a mistress, M., the sister of a criminal known as Cutting Ball, hanged at Tyburn. Harvey described her as a sorry ragged queen of whom Green had his base son in Fortunatus Green. According to Newcomb, a Fortunatus Green was buried at Shoreditch on 12 August 1593, whose folk tale name might lie behind Harvey's jest. Topic. Writing According to Newcomb, Green's works evince an inexhaustible linguistic facility, grounded in wide if not painstaking, reading in the classics, and extracurricular reading in the modern continental languages. He wrote prolifically, from 1583 to 1592, he published more than 25 works in prose, becoming one of the first authors in England to support himself with his pen in an age when professional authorship was virtually unknown. Green's literary career began with the publication of a long romance, Mamelia, entered in the Stationer's Register on 3 October 1580. Green's romances were written in a highly wrought style which reached its highest level in Pandusto 1588 and Menophon 1589. Short poems and songs incorporated in some of the romances attest to his ability as a lyric poet. One song from Menophon, Weep Not My Wanton, Smile Upon My Knee, a mother's lullaby to her baby son, enjoyed immense success, and is now probably his best known work. In his later, Coney Catching pamphlets, Green fashioned himself into a well known public figure, telling colorful inside stories of rakes and rascals duping young gentlemen and solid citizens out of their hard earned money. These stories, told from the perspective of a repentant former rascal, have been considered autobiographical, and have been thought to incorporate many facts of Green's own life thinly veiled as fiction, his early riotous living, his marriage and desertion of his wife and child for the sister of a notorious character of the London underworld, his dealings with players, and his success in the production of plays for them. However, according to Newcomb, in his later prose works, Green himself built his persona around a myth of prodigal decline that cannot be taken at face value. His plays earned himself the title as one of the university wits, including George Peel, Thomas Nash, and Christopher Marlowe. 
Richardson makes a similar argument, concluding that Green's later works prejudice the examination of all the work before them, and that the prose works prior to the Coney Catching and Repentance pamphlets establish that initially at least Green was respectable. Richardson considers that Green claimed from the outset a moral or civilizing purpose in his writing. His tales repeatedly illustrate the disastrous disruptions caused in life by passion and laud the life of restraint. His views are basically conservative. He equivocates and hesitates over the defense of the values of a conservative culture, virginity, true devotion, strict moral probity. In addition to his prose works, Green also wrote several plays, none of them published in his lifetime, including the Scottish history of James IV, Alphonsus, and his greatest popular success, Friar Bacon and Friar Bungie, as well as Orlando Furioso, based on Ludovico Ariosto's Orlando Furioso. In addition to the plays published under his name after his death, Green has been proposed as the author of several other dramas, including a second part to Friar Bacon which may survive as John of Bordeaux, The Troublesome Reign of King John, Georgia Green, Fair M, A Knack to Know a Knave, Locrine, Selimus, and Edward III, and even Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus and Henry VI plays. <laughs> Green and Shakespeare Green is most familiar to Shakespeare scholars for his pamphlet Green's Groat's Worth of Wit, which alludes to a line, O oh, tiger's heart wrapped in a woman's hide, found in Shakespeare's Henry VI, Part 3, c. 1591-92. For there is an upstart crow, beautified with our feathers, that with his tiger's heart wrapped in a player's hide, supposes he is as well able to bombast out a blank verse as the best of you, and being an absolute Johannes factotum, is in his own conceit the only shake scene in a country. Green evidently complains of an actor who believes he can write as well as university-educated playwrights, alludes to the actor with a quotation that appears in both the true tragedy quarto and Shakespeare's folio version of Henry VI, Part Three, and uses the term, shake scene, a unique term never used before or after Green's screed, to refer to the actor. The Oxford English Dictionary notes that it is, of uncertain or vague meaning, used by Green in his attack on Shakespeare. Some scholars have hypothesized that all or part of Grotesworth was written shortly after Green's death by Henry Chettle or another one of his fellow writers, hoping to capitalize on a lurid tale of deathbed repentance. Hans Peter Born argues that Green wrote the whole of Grotesworth, and that his deathbed attack on the upstart crow was provoked by Shakespeare's interference with a play attributed to Green, a knack to know a knave. Green's colorful and irresponsible character has led some, including Stephen Greenblatt, to speculate that Green may have served as the model for Shakespeare's Falstaff. His quotation has also been used as the title for the 2016 sitcom Upstart Crow on Shakespeare's Life, written by Ben Elton, its story commencing in 1592, the year the quotation was written, and featuring Green as a character, played by Mark Heap. Topic. Some prose works Mamelia, a mirror or looking glass for the ladies of England 1583, dedicated to Lord Darcy of the North Mamelia, the second part of the Triumph of Palace 1593, dedicated to Robert Lee and Roger Portington The Anatomy of Lovers' Flatteries 1584, dedicated to Mary Rogers, wife to Master Hugh Rogers of Everton the Mirror of Modesty, 1584, dedicated to Margaret, Countess of Derby. Arbasto, The Anatomy of Fortune, 1584, dedicated to Lady Mary Talbot. Guidonius, The Card of Fancy, 1584, dedicated to Edward de Vere, 17th Earl of Oxford. The Debate Between Folly and Love, 1584, no dedicatee. The Second Part of the Tritameron of Love, 1587, no dedicatee. Planetomachia, 1585, dedicated to Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester. An oration or funeral sermon, 1585, no dedicatee. Morondo, the Tritameron of Love, 1587, dedicated to Philip Howard, 20th Earl of Arundel. Morondo, the second part of the Tritameron of Love, 1587, no dedicatee. Euphues, his censure to Philautus, 1587, dedicated to Robert Devereux, 2nd Earl of Essex. 
Green's Farewell to Folly 1591, dedicated to Robert Carey, Esquire Penelope's Web 1587, dedicated to Margaret, Countess of Cumberland, and Anne, Countess of Warwick Alcida, Green's Metamorphosis 1617, dedicated to Sir Charles Blunt Green's Orpharion 1599, dedicated to Robert Carey, Esquire Pandusto, 1588, dedicated to George Clifford, 3rd Earl of Cumberland. Paramedes, 1588, dedicated to Gervis Clifton, Esquire. Ciceronis Amor, 1589, dedicated to Ferdinando Stanley, Lord Strange. Menaphon, 1589, dedicated to Lady Hales, wife to the late deceased Sir James Hales. The Spanish Masquerado, 1589, dedicated to Hugh Offley, Sheriff of the City of London. Green's Morning Garment, 1590, dedicated to George Clifford, 3rd Earl of Cumberland. Green's Never Too Late, 1590, dedicated to Thomas Burnaby, Esquire. Francesco's Fortunes, or the second part of Green's Never Too Late, 1590, dedicated to Thomas Burnaby, Esquire. Green's Vision, written at the instant of his death 1590, dedicated to Nicholas Sonder of Ewell, Esquire. The Royal Exchange Asterisk 1590, dedicated to Sir John Hart, Lord Mayor of London. A Notable Discovery of Cousnage 1591, no dedicatee. The Second Part of Connacaching 1591, no dedicatee. The Black Book's Messenger 1592, no dedicatee. A disputation between a he kani catcher and a she kani catcher 1592, no dedicatee. A groatsworth of wit bought with a million of repentance 1592, no dedicatee. Philomela, 1592, Bridget Radcliffe, Lady Fitzwalter, wife of Robert Radcliffe, 5th Earl of Sussex. A quip for an upstart courtier 1592, Thomas Burnaby, Esquire. The third and last part of Kana Catching, 1592, no Topic: <inaudible> Verse A Maiden's Dream, 1591, dedicated to Lady Elizabeth Hatton, wife to Sir William Hatton. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Plays Friar Bacon and Friar Bungie, circa 1590. The History of Orlando Furioso, circa 1590. A Looking Glass for London and England with Thomas Lodge, circa 1590. The Scottish History of James IV, circa 1590. The Comical History of Alphonsus, King of Aragon, circa 1590. Selimus, one, circa 1594. Topic. In popular culture In the Ben Elton written sitcom, Upstart Crow, he is portrayed by Mark Heap as being alive following the publication of Groat's Worth and a constant obstacle to Shakespeare's success. His most famous song Weep Not My Wanton, Smile Upon My Knee is a recurring motif in the historical novel The Grove of Eagles by Winston Graham. <laughs> Notes <laughs>